I had a really rough 2009. A series of unfortunate personal events and changes completely shifted my life sideways. The economic downturn took its toll on me and completely forced me to do my business in a different way compared to how I'd been running it for the last 15 years. I was overcommitted to the point of exhaustion. Uh, it felt like I was giving 10% to everything and 100% to nothing. And I was giving bits and pieces of myself to my family, to my friends, colleagues, uh, and to my volunteer work. And so it, it seemed as if I needed something to change, some kind of revelation. And I knew that on the outside, maybe I was saying to everyone, everything's great. And on the inside, I was trying not to freak out. So I needed some kind of revelation, something. I was hoping and praying for one, for the year to end, and two, for something to come along to change my life, basically. So I got a card from my cousin, and it was a, a beautiful, supportive card. On the front, there was a quote that said, there are years that ask questions and years that answer. So when I opened up the card, there was a white light shining out of the card. It elevated itself off of my kitchen table, and there were angels singing. <laughs> oh. So I, I thought it was a sign. I thought, this is it. This is going to be the year. 2010 will be the year that I get all of the answers. They would probably be presented to me in a color-coded set of binders, like an owner's manual, and that this would be it. This would be the year that finally everything would fall into place. So of course, that wasn't the case. Uh, January 1st came and went, and I was still kind of waiting and praying and hoping for a revelation, for something to change. So a few months went, went by, and I met a new friend at a professional conference. And she and her partner had just done an experiment, and they didn't buy anything new for one year. And so her stories about uh, streamlining and decluttering and uh, kind of reprioritizing were really intriguing and very inspirational. So I decided on the spot that I would start my year of nothing new. So I set some boundaries for myself. Uh, I knew right off the bat that I wasn't going to start raising chickens or making my own soap. So I made friends with people who did. <laughs> and I also knew that I was going to buy new food. So that's kind of the number one question. What about food? And there is no such thing as used food. So new food is good. There is, once it's used, it's gone. So new food. And then I also allowed any other consumables. So toiletries or cleaning products, things that once they were used, they would be gone. And then I also allowed in-person social experiences. My family scattered, so I allowed myself that travel or that kind of expenditure. And so then I started the year, and I started by stopping shopping. I stopped completely going to the places that were tempting for me. Right now, you're thinking of that place, I know. Uh, the place where uh, I knew I, before I spent money before I even got in, into the door or opened up the website. And I knew I needed to just not even put myself in a position to want to spend any money there. And so after that, a couple, couple weeks, maybe a month went by, and it, it was easy, it was almost boring, and I needed something else to keep things going. So I decided to add monthly motivations, so challenges that would keep things interesting and maybe a little bit more fun for this whole experiment. The first thing I did was start a garden, and that became my joy, my hobby, uh, everything about it, the miracle of a tiny pinhead-sized seed turning into lettuce. It's exciting. And so, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's all about the lettuce. So uh, started there, and everything about that was really great. So most of the food in the U.S. travels about 1,500 miles from farm to table. So it was really gratifying to walk 50 feet to get kale or a quarter mile down the street to go to the farmer's market and get eggs from Fimka and Larry. So I decided to continue those months. So in June, I didn't turn on any lights in my house. I left the back porch light on just for safety and security. And I travel, so uh, for a while I tried to not have any lights on in my hotel room, and that was weird and scary. And then I tried using a little headlamp, and that was weirder and more scary. So <laughs> I let that go, and I stuck with the one light rule. So anytime I'm in a hotel room or in a ship cabin, I only have one light on it at any given time. And you know it can be easy. You just walk in and start flipping on the lights. So that stuck, and it, it helped me kind of translate that to how do I use the lights thing while I'm traveling. In July, I started out trying not to use anything plastic, and it was almost impossible. You're probably within an inch of something plastic right now. And so instead, I decided I wouldn't buy anything plastic, and that's almost as impossible. Uh, most, m most food, especially if it's fast food, comes in plastic containers. And so I also decided to kind of punish myself, and any time if I did slip, I would make some decisions about the packaging and would have to force myself to kind of bring that home. So that helped, helped me make, make 
better decisions about uh, plastic. And I also started carrying a set of bamboo utensils and my own cloth napkins. So I have all this little kit when I, when I travel. Uh, so in August, I decided to only eat foods grown in New York State. I ate a lot of corn in August and other wonderful things. Corn is my friend. And when I traveled, I decided I would only eat within a 100-mile radius of that area. So a lot of farm stands, a lot of grocery stores. And uh, that was actually really interesting. And there's so much more available, so much local abundance uh, if you really start looking. In September, I detoxed my house. I cut all of my cleaning products in half and got back to basics, so baking soda and vinegar and hot water, lemon juice, sunshine, and completely cleared out kind of the under the sink area with most of the products that are not a natural blue color and nothing against the blue colors, uh, but things that were not, not at all consistent uh, with how I wanted to live, trying to have a, a much smaller footprint but maybe leave a bigger handprint. In October and November, I did the same thing. I tried to detox myself and my personal care products. And it took two months. It was really important to me that I was able to use products that weren't tested on animals, that had some kind of awareness or very few toxic kind of ingredients that if, went, if into the oceans or into our streams would cause trouble. And uh, also that the packaging was recyclable or recycled. So it took a while to get that done. Uh, in December, my close friends and family decided that we weren't going to exchange any holiday gifts, that being together was enough, and that there was no amount of gift giving that could ever replace the personal, personal time that we had. Uh, a few select friends did receive uh, gifts, uh, small loaves of bread, which when the feedback came back around, they were more like tiny little bricks, <laughs> which was, feedback is love, so <laughs> change the recipe a little bit. Uh, and so, Interesting way to end the year when that is often a year where people are maxed out in many ways. Uh, we weren't burdened with that, with all of that. In January, I did a fashion fast. I only wore six items of clothing for one month, and uh, that was really interesting in terms of what I do not need uh, to have, and I completely cleaned out my closet. In February, I tracked the trash in my house and, uh, and reduced, did the similar to when I was tr uh, with my travel trash. And then in March, I worked really hard to reduce the amount of gas that I put in my car and decided on uh, two, at least two days a week that were no drive days. And so that at least was making some, some impact. So I cleaned up, I cleaned out. I decided that anything that I did keep when I was cleaning out closets had to be beautiful, memorable, or useful. It had to be at least two, uh, two of the three. And if it didn't, it was donated or discarded. And then I also decided that uh, part of the, the end of that year was trying to figure out what was next. Uh, and in that process, too, decided that this was all about kind of greening my lifestyle. So who cares? So what? You grew a few green beans, saved a little money. A lot of people do that. Uh, plus, what you're doing is on such a small scale that it's not going to matter, said former friend. <laughs> so <laughs> he's not here right now. Um, for about six months, that set me back in terms of trying to figure out what my next step was. Did this story even matter? Who cares? Maybe he's right. Uh, maybe I should just go back to kind of the way I used to live with not really worrying about how I was spending my money, my time, or my energy. And then I realized that actually his flip comment helped me solidify my why in all of this. So his who cares was the, an the my answer was I care. And I'm responsible for this corner of the planet that I live on, not only for myself, but for my nephews and the next seven generations after me. Does it matter? It matters because my carbon footprint is huge. I travel alone, I live alone. Much of what I do involves driving anywhere from four to eight hours, and so I'm in my car by myself. And the second I get on an airplane, no amount of reduced, reuse, recycle can counteract any of that. So I feel like every green bean, um, every secondhand sweater matters. I feel like every fork that I don't put into the landfill or every styrofoam cup I never buy in the first place matters. And so I get to decide, and in my purchases or how I spend my time and my energy as well, does this or does this not matter? And so now from there, I can start to figure out what this really means for me. So I had to make some hard decisions uh, that year and in the year after as well. I decided that I needed to release about six different work commitments as well as two longtime friendships. Uh, part of this decluttering wasn't uh, just about my physical space. It was about streamlining and cleaning out my head and cleaning out my heart. And I'm convinced uh, that part of, um, part of this year was really about me allowing other things to come into my life. 
And so I know that the quality of time that I spend with my nephews um, and with my fourth graders at Henry Hudson School, number 28, is enhanced because I let go and allow the really important things to show up. So what I thought was going to be a shopping experiment turned into a values realignment, a complete overhaul of what was really important to me. And I asked myself these questions over and over again during my year. Do I want this? Do I need this? Or do I have it? So do I want it? Maybe. And then I get to decide, is it beautiful, useful, memorable? Uh, am I OK with how that was made, who made it, and where it's going to go when I'm done with it? Do I need it? Probably not. Uh, what I really need, basic needs, I need food, clothing, and shelter. That's it. And love, four things. I need food, clothing, shelter, love. Those needs, those daily basic needs, are met for me every day of my life. And do I have it? I have a wealth of intangibles that no one can take away from me. And by the way, I, I have huge privilege to even have made a decision like this. I want you to know that I know that there are many people, if not most people, who cannot choose to buy something you used or new, uh, that I, or they have nothing. And so this was an in-my-face reminder of that uh, every day of that year and every day following as well. So what can you do? What could you do for one month, for three months, for a year that would change how you live on this planet? Uh, one planet, um, not the nine planets that we would need if everyone lived like I did. Uh, what, what can you do? Something that's doable but challenging, something that would make an impact on how you spend your money or your time or your energy. Uh, could you never ever again buy a plastic uh, a, a bottled water? Could you cultivate one tomato plant? Uh, could you decide to overhaul that under the sink, you know, kitchen cleaning product area? Uh, could you decide that you need to release a friendship? So maybe it's not about the money for you, but it's about the time and the energy. So 365 days of nothing new. Uh, it turns out it wasn't the year of the answer. It was the year of the questions, and it was the year of the right questions. So what do you need? What do you want? And what do you have? And what if what you really need is nothing new? Thank you.